Air flight is more complicated than you might think, and with complexity comes secrets, many of which the airlines don't want us common folk to know. But we do. These are 20 flight secrets airlines don't want you to know. Number 20. Airplane water tanks are full of bacteria. You might say no to a hot cup of tea or coffee on a plane for many reasons. First of all, it's usually not the uh, most pleasant beverage you would have had that day. But now you might say no for another reason. Your fresh brew might contain fecal matter. Studies conducted by the NYC Food Policy Center at Hunter College revealed that it's probably in your best interest to avoid ordering tap water, which includes beverages made with that tap water, like tea and coffee. Food Policy Center professor Charles Platkin said the water tanks on planes don't get cleaned out enough and are usually only topped up between flights. This means that whatever's already present in those tanks remains in there while fresh water is added. That's the opinion of one man, but does the evidence back it up? Well, actually, yes. Research by the Environmental Protection Agency revealed that 12% of commercial planes had fecal bacteria in their tap water supply. Now, even though some airlines say they use high-tech ozone disinfection processes at least four times a year, most people aren't convinced. Now might be the right time to start buying bottled water when you begin flying. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. Want to know why this video is called Flight Secrets That Are Never Told to Passengers? Well, there are many reasons, but this odd topic is the main one. This photo, posted to Reddit by a user called FunkySlamDam77, seems to show a terrifyingly Lovecraftian beast flying through the air, photographed through the window of a plane. Whether this image is real or not has led to a lot of debate, but the most interesting thing is one commenter mentioned on the original post that he was a pilot and he admitted that pilots often see weird things in the sky. Maybe not things as blatant as this, but they choose not to alert the passengers. Terrifying, right? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag OddTopic. Number 19. Your smartphone won't bring down the plane. Most frequent flyers now know the drill. Put your bags away, sit down, put your seatbelt on, and turn your mobile devices off. It becomes like muscle memory. But why are we turning our devices off? Well, because we'll bring down the plane, of course. That's what we're sometimes led to believe. But there's no direct evidence to suggest that mobile phones and other electronic devices actually interfere with aircraft systems. The Federal Aviation Administration requested a study in 1992 to get to the bottom of the electronics issue, and they didn't find any interference with flight systems. The RTCA, who conducted the study, even recommended that music players, gaming devices, and laptops be allowed. However, as a just-in-case measure, they also recommended that these devices be turned off for takeoff and landing. Part of the study also involved looking into cases in the 1990s when aircraft crews reported devices causing instrument display malfunctions, uncommanded airplane rolls, and autopilot disconnection. These anomalies were never able to be replicated. Even though wireless devices and phones can emit active transmissions, the way they're made means it's unlikely they'll interfere with aircraft communication bands and GPS navigation systems. So why do you still need to switch your devices off or leave them in airplane mode? Well, there is possible ground network interference, and this is enough for the Federal Communications Commission and Federal Aviation Administration to leave the ban in place. Number 18. Take swift action when your flight is cancelled. Any number of things can cause your flight to be canceled, such as lousy weather, staffing shortages, maintenance issues, or even oversold flights. As stressful as not making it to your destination on time can be, it's important not to panic. Instead, take swift action. If you suspect that your flight might have been canceled, position yourself as close to the travel desk as possible. That can mean that you're one of the first in line to talk to an agent and be booked onto another flight. If you don't manage to get near the front of the line, join the queue and call the carrier. Sometimes you can experience faster service by calling the international call center for your airline, who are more than capable of handling your request even from another country. You can also sign up to free text alerts to learn when your flight is canceled before you leave home to save yourself an unnecessary drive. You can then organize a new flight from the comfort of your home. If you're already at the airport, you can also use self-service kiosks by scanning your boarding pass to switch flights and print new passes. You have way more options for canceled flights than you might think. Number 17. It's not always the plain food's fault. 
Pretty much every frequent flyer has had a poor experience with airplane food and beverages. You might notice that food tastes bland, or even the simplest things like fruit don't seem to taste as good as they usually do. It's easy to blame the caterers or even the flight crew, but it might not actually be their fault, at least as far as blandness is concerned. Many factors can suppress your ability to taste salty and sweet food, such as the dry air, a pressurized cabin, and even background noise. Caterers are actually aware of this, and in most cases, they will modify their recipes to make up for the loss in taste. Interestingly, studies revealed that taste could be reduced by as much as 30%, which means that a previously incredibly salty bag of peanuts can sometimes taste like it has been mildly salted. But it's also not that straightforward, since our tastes are affected based on the ingredients. For example, some ingredients actually become more intense in the sky, like lemongrass and curry, whereas others aren't affected at all, like garlic and cinnamon. Number 16. There are hidden objects in planes. Planes always look reasonably transparent. There are seats, storage, a cockpit, a bathroom, you get the idea, but there are also things you can't see which are still there. For example, they have a defibrillator within close reach if someone should have a medical emergency on the plane, along with supplemental oxygen. If there's a fire, you'll also likely spot a flight attendant running down the aisle with a fire extinguisher. These are all standard things to have on board a plane. But did you know how many planes also have handcuffs? That way, unruly or unsafe passengers can be restrained. There's also always an act or a crowbar, but I doubt that's for use on passengers. At least, we hope not. There are also plenty of hidden features you might not have been aware of, like the hidden handrail in the overhead storage compartments for flight attendants to use as they're walking down the aisles, and secret sleeping compartments for the flight crew to catch some shut-eye. And have you ever spotted those tiny little holes in the windows? These holes protect against pressure drop. Number 15. Pilots are tired and scared. When we board a plane, we have complete faith in the pilots in the cockpit. We need them to help us get to our destination safely, and we generally have a great deal of confidence in their abilities. But should we? I mean, some pretty terrifying studies have been conducted that highlight how tired pilots are and how terrified they are about this fatigue impacting their abilities to, you know, not nosedive the plane into the ground. The worst part is that these studies into commercial pilots were conducted back in 2016. With the COVID-19 pandemic, things might be a whole lot worse. The study involved 7,000 239 commercial pilots in Europe who were asked questions about their company's safety culture. Over half of the pilots said fatigue wasn't taken seriously in their workplace, and almost 60% said they were often tired at work. About 38% also said they didn't have a high degree of trust in management regarding safety. The next time you board a plane, you won't be able to help but look out for yawning flight crew members just to make sure they've had enough sleep. Number 14. You can get luggage compensation. Everyone is pretty much guaranteed to know at least one person who has dealt with lost luggage on a flight. It was an issue even before the pandemic, but it's certainly not been made any better by it. But what are your rights and requirements for when your luggage goes missing temporarily or permanently or gets damaged? You might not know, but you could be entitled to compensation. Most airlines offer compensation for passengers whose bags are lost for more than 24 hours. The money you receive is often for covering the costs of things you need for your trip, like toiletries and clothing, and to compensate for anything that's been permanently lost. Most airlines will also reimburse your check luggage fee, which is really the least they can do. While every airline's different, many will pay about 50 bucks per day for the first five days of your luggage being lost. If your luggage is permanently lost, you'll need to provide the airline with an inventory of everything in the bag so that you can receive compensation for its value. Airlines are actually liable for up to almost $4,000, but the maximum liability for international flights is approximately $1,780. Your airline might choose to pay you more than that, but they're not legally obligated to do so. Number 13. Your flight attendants can nap. If you can't stay awake the entire time on a long-haul flight, how do you think your flight attendants can? Well, here's a hint. They don't. Flight attendants aboard your long-haul flight are just as able to get some much-needed shut-eye as you are, but they just don't do it in the same part of the plane. Typically, they have their own bedrooms for power naps tucked away behind secret stairways. Sometimes, these bedrooms are even in hatches that look a bit like overhead bins. On any given flight, you might be surprised to learn that flight attendants are sleeping either above or below you, making sure they're refreshed and ready to provide 
provide service throughout the entire flight. On most long-haul flights, flight crews are split in half. One half of the team works while the other rests. Sometimes they sleep, while other times they just lie down, browse their phones, and enjoy their time away from the general public. The size and comfort of the flight crew's bedrooms can depend on the plane. On a Boeing 777, flight crews can enjoy two spacious sleeping berths, business class seats, and space for a sink, lavatory, or closet. Each bed is around six feet long, two and a half feet wide, and installed with heavy partition curtains to muffle noises. Number 12. If you hear certain code words, you might be in trouble. Pilots and flight crews typically don't like telling passengers that they're in trouble until they really have to. Up until that point, they might rely on code words and hushed tones amongst themselves and with air traffic control to keep everyone updated on the situation. Although, we're about to share some code words with you that might mean you're more in the know than the average passenger. Now, I don't know if you should feel special or petrified, to be honest. The three most serious transponder codes for unusual emergency situations are 7700, 7600, and 7500. If a pilot were to use the code 75 500, they could silently tell air traffic control that someone's trying to hijack or unlawfully interfere with the plane. There's no need for them to utter a word, which means the hijacker or perpetrator might be none the wiser. If they were to use 7600, you can tell ATC that you've had a radio or communications failure. Although, this would probably only work if you're still able to communicate with ATC. Then there's 7700. This code is for a general emergency, which could be absolutely anything. Pilots are encouraged to use this code in any challenging or emergency situation. Number 11. Cabin lights are dimmed so that you can see in the dark. When you're traveling at night, you might notice how the cabin lights are dimmed when you're getting ready to take off and land. It might seem like an absurd thing to worry about since the pilot doesn't need these lights to be on or off to fly successfully, but it's actually for our benefit and safety. According to a senior pilot, the lights in the cabin are dimmed so that our eyes adjust to the darkness and we can see properly. This would be incredibly important in an emergency. If the lights were on and the cabin was suddenly thrust into darkness, many people would struggle to adjust to the dark and might not be able to make it to safety. According According to reports, it can take our eyes up to half an hour to adjust to a dark setting, which is certainly not fast enough in an emergency. It's also worth pointing out that in a dark cabin, emergency lighting and those all-important illuminated pathways are also more visible. Now, you'll also know why flight attendants ask you to pull up your window shades. They want your eyes to be as used to the light conditions as possible. Number 10. You might have rights if your travel vouchers expire. When the COVID-19 pandemic took hold, airlines grounded up to 80% of their flights. It was absolute chaos, especially as people had made travel plans and could no longer go on trips that they had booked and paid for. Naturally, you'd expect a cash refund, but even though that is a federal law requirement for airlines, it didn't always happen. Many airlines offered travel vouchers, and if people chose to cancel their flights rather than wait for the airline to do it, they weren't even eligible for cash refunds. The problem for many people now is that their travel vouchers are due to expire, and some people still have no plans to travel. Fortunately, getting an extension on your voucher might be as straightforward as calling the airline. Many airlines, such as American Airlines, are more than happy to offer extensions, while others simply put extended expiration dates on the vouchers in the first place. If your vouchers have already expired and your airline isn't playing ball, you might be able to complain to the U.S. Department of Transportation. Number 9. Pilots don't eat the airplane food. If you're a pilot and your co-pilot orders a delicious-looking dish on a flight, you're out of luck. Many airlines make it against the rules for pilots to eat the same food. It seems absurd, but what do you think would happen if that food happened to cause food poisoning? Both pilots would be impacted, and then who would fly the plane? Therefore, it's a general rule that one pilot will order from the business class menu, while the other will pick something from the first class menu. Food poisoning on planes isn't really common, but it does and can happen. For example, about 120 passengers on a British Airways Concord flight in 1984 contracted salmonellosis, and one passenger even died from complications. The pilot didn't eat the food, so he was unaffected. But at that point, rules about food choices weren't even in place. A similar event happened on a 1975 Japan Airlines flight. About 143 passengers got food poisoning when they ate bad eggs, but a jet-lagged pilot chose the dinner option and was unaffected. There aren't actually any written aviation authority rules about meals, but most pilots are pretty careful about choosing something different from their co pilot. Number 8. More tickets could mean higher price. 
In many industries, buying larger volumes or quantities can mean paying less for each item, but that's not typically the case when purchasing airline tickets. You might see tickets advertised for a highly competitive price when you're only searching for one or two, but that price might be higher when you're looking for, say, eight tickets for your family members. This can be because there are a limited number of tickets in each price category. For example, you might see a limited number of tickets available for 99 bucks, making you think you can fly your whole family to a vacation destination for just $99 each. But in reality, there might only be a handful of tickets in that price bracket, and the number of tickets you add to your shopping cart might bump them up into a different price category. Now, fortunately, there are ways you might be able to get around this problem and save a bit of money. You might decide to purchase one ticket at a time, even though your travel party might not all be sitting together. You might also choose to book through a travel agency, which might be able to get you a better deal than you can get for yourself. Number 7. You can still get a free upgrade. Free upgrades always seem like something that happens in the movies. You just ask for one and you get it. Do you actually know anyone who's been bumped up to business or first class just by asking? It seems rare, but it is still possible to receive free upgrades. Now, the easiest way to get bumped up is by, of course, paying for that upgrade. But you might also be bumped up at random if you're a passenger with high future value or you're a frequent flyer. It's also a possibility if your flight's been canceled and the only other flight available to get you to your destination to catch a connecting flight only has free business class seats. Sometimes Sometimes, a last-minute aircraft change can mean some passengers receive an upgrade. This is often the case if the economy cabin is smaller and the business cabin is larger than the one on the plane it replaced. Then there's the simple act of overbooking. If the economy cabin is overbooked, some passengers might be bumped up to business class to ensure everyone can reach their destination. Number 6. You can bring your own food. Packing for a trip can be stressful when you know that you need to abide by the TSA's rules. If you travel often, you'll probably know the 311 liquid rule like the back of your hand, a 3.4 ounce bottle of liquid necessities like shampoo, and they must be in one one-quart zip-top bag carried by one passenger. But that doesn't mean you'll have to leave all your food behind. You can bring food onto the plane to enjoy on your flight, as long as you're still following that liquids rule. So that means you can bring a wide variety of food items, but only if they aren't in liquid that doesn't comply with the 311 liquid rule. If you're feeling peckish, there's no reason why you can't pack a few cookies, crackers, some bread, dried fruit, sandwiches, even meat, seafood, and eggs into your carry-on luggage. Even live lobsters are allowed, as long as they're in clear, sealed, and spill-proof containers. But not all foods are allowed. Canned foods can be pretty tricky to get through checkpoints, and condiments like salsa, dips, and even cheese have to fit within the liquids rule. Sometimes it's just easier to eat the onboard food and tuck into a decent meal when you get off the plane. Number 5. Some days are cheaper to fly than others. It's only natural to seek out the best deals when you're planning a trip away. If you want to save several hundred dollars on flights, it might be worth reconsidering which days you'll take off work for a family vacation. As a general rule, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday are amongst the cheapest days to fly. And if you're flying to Europe, weekdays are usually always more affordable than weekends. Now, of course, it depends on which airline you're flying with and where you're flying to and from. But there's no harm in playing with the calendar dates to see just how many savings can be made. USA Today played with the flight dates and discovered that Flying on Friday and Sunday was $500 from Boston to Las Vegas, but it was just $228 for a Saturday and Wednesday flight. While traveling at the end of the week to enjoy your weekend in earnest might seem like a good idea, the money savings in delaying your travels or bringing them forward might be worth their weight in gold. And after all, what's wrong with flying on a Wednesday? Number 4. Plane surfaces have more germs than toilet seats. Most of us are aware that toilets aren't usually the cleanest places, no matter how many times we clean them. Bacteria and germs are bound to be lurking all around these areas due to the nature of our business there. But do you know what's even dirtier than toilet seats? The average plane surface. And if that doesn't make you want to bathe in hand sanitizer after getting off a flight, I don't know what will. First of all, those tray tables. Yuck. The 2015 study tested samples and discovered that tray table surfaces had over eight times more bacteria per square inch than the lavatory floor buttons. Many of the trays that have been tested have come back showing cold viruses, norovirus, human para-influenza viruses, and even the superbug MRSA known for causing skin conditions. The seatbelt buckles aren't much better. I mean, think about just how many hands would be on them in the average day. They had about 230 colony-forming units for every square inch, and there were 285 for every square inch on the air vents. And if that much bacteria and germs are found on air vents and seatbelt buckles, imagine the absolute chaos in the bathrooms. Tests on airplane bathrooms revealed fecal coliform E. coli on flush handles, sinks, and toilet seats. Number 3. 
flight attendants are highly trained. Some people seem to think that flight attendants are glorified servers. If they could serve in a diner, they could serve on a plane. But that is not the case. They are highly trained people with some major responsibilities. Sure, they are there to answer to your questions, hand you tea and coffee, and try to accommodate all your requests. But they are also the ones trying to keep everyone calm in an emergency and enforce the rules to keep people safe. They are also the last ones to leave a plane in an emergency event, which has often meant they have sacrificed their own lives to save passengers. Flight attendants can also perform first state, run through pre-flight checks, instruct passengers on how to use emergency equipment, and make all necessary boarding announcements. The amount of training they go through to become flight attendants is unreal, and it's all in the name of making sure everything runs smoothly, people remain safe, and passengers can get to their destinations feeling happy. According to a pilot on Quora, it's not uncommon for pilots to work with some very good and some very mediocre flight attendants. When speaking about the very good ones, they said they know how to follow procedures, handle emergencies, and use good judgment. They're also brave, focused, and smart. The pilot also said they are the ones that need to be bossy in emergencies by barking orders, snatching bags out of people's hands, and pushing them onto emergency slides to get them out of planes. Number 2. It is possible to get refunds on non-refundable tickets. When you see the price difference between a non-refundable and a refundable airline ticket, it's a bit of a no-brainer. It's much cheaper to purchase a non-refundable ticket and take the risk. But what happens when you can no longer travel? Do you lose your money and ticket? Not necessarily. In some cases, you might be lucky enough to receive a refund from your chosen airline, and it can all come down to how you approach the situation. Send a kindly worded, uplifting email explaining your situation, and you might just strike it lucky. The nicer you are, the better your chances might be. Sometimes, airlines will also process refunds if you have a valid medical reason, your travel partner dies, you've had a military order change, or there's a significant flight schedule change. And if you learn within 24 hours of making your booking that you can't go, you might be eligible for a flight credit or immediate refund. Now, of course, there's never any guarantee that these methods will work, and some airlines will simply turn you down just because they can. However, there's no harm in using kindness to see if you can receive a desirable outcome, or maybe consider shelling out for a refundable ticket from the beginning. Number 1. Airlines and passengers have contracts. How often do you read the fine print on anything you agree to? The latest app you've downloaded, that new software, it's long, it's boring, and quite frankly, most of us probably don't even bother reading it. But you know it's there, and sometimes that's the main thing. Did you know that you also have agreements and contracts with airlines when you purchase tickets? By buying tickets with particular airlines, you agree to things like liability limits for baggage loss and damage, claims restrictions, and the liability rights and limits for their delay and failure to provide a service. Out of curiosity, it can sometimes be worth reading through these legal terms, which are often called contract of carriage, just so you can see what you're agreeing to. I don't know about you, but I'll be heading on to my next flight with a whole different perspective about absolutely everything. Who knew that pilots were so concerned about food poisoning or that you really can get free upgrades? How many of these flight secrets did you already know? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!